All right, so this afternoon uh, I thought what it would be a good thing to do uh, would be to show you some uranium. In several of the videos previously you've seen uh, various forms of uranium and one of them was just the metal but it always appears black and it appears black because it's got these oxide surfaces on it but actually uranium just like lots of other metals in the periodic table should be a shiny silvery appearance metal. Uh, so I just thought I'd take this opportunity just to, we'll go in the lab and we'll clean some up and I'll show you some actual naked uranium if you like uh, because it's really very pretty to look at. My colleague and co-presenter on these videos, Steve Liddell, has got a big grant to study the chemistry of uranium. Chemical research is really quite expensive. You have to pay for the chemicals, the equipment and the salaries of the people that do it. And Steve has been very fortunate to get a grant from the European Research Council, which gives grants to young researchers all over Europe. So we're very pl proud of him. And more excitingly, it's going to lead to lots of new chemistry of uranium. Right, so what we've got here is a beaker which contains some uranium turnings. And as you can see, they look kind of dark in colour. Normally that they look really black under the oil, but as we've got them out and we've thinned them out a bit, you can already start to see shiny edges on them because actually that's the, the true colour of uranium. It was originally a block of uranium and it was machined on a lathe, which has just turned it all out as little turnings because that's much easier for us to handle because it's got a bigger surface area. And uranium as a metal is really very hard, so you can't just saw an edge off it because you'd actually blunt the saw before you would actually get a bit chopped off. So you have to use really hard drill bits to get this uh, uranium turned off. Uh, now it looks, still looks fairly dark, and that's because it's got this oxide layer on it which has passivated it over time. Because uranium's quite a hard metal, so it likes to be bonded to hard elements like oxygen. We're gonna get rid of this oil and wash it a few times just to make sure it's free of that. And then we're gonna treat it with concentrated uh, nitric acid and the nitric acid uh, attacks the oxide layer and pulls all the oxygens off and just leaves you with a nice shiny uranium underneath. And when it does that, it gives off clouds of NO2, which is orange, so you start to see that coming off in the solution uh, darkening. And then what you should see after we've washed it a few times is the nice shiny metal surface and that was actually there all the time underneath. I think it is about a million euros, so it's really quite a large sum of money. That's one and a half million dollars, so it's a lot of money, but it's over five years and we'll pay for a good team for him to do his research with. And so I think we can look forward to a lot more new compounds on YouTube. Like all our uranium in the lab, this is depleted, which means that all, essentially all of the radioactive uh, component has been removed. So this is essentially non-radioactive. It's toxic as a heavy metal would be, like lead, but it, uh, it's no worse than lead, really. I'm just weighing it now because... Uh, Part of the rules that uh, govern the fact that we're allowed to use this stuff is that we have to keep an accurate measure of how much we've used every time. Okay, so now <coughs> we've got these turnings, they're free of the oil and we're going to treat them with concentrated nitric acid, which is going to clean them up. This is a very strong acid, so you have to handle it quite carefully. Chemically right now, the HNO3, which is the nitric acid, that's reacting with uh, what on the surface is U, O, N. We don't know how many oxygens there are. I suppose X would be better than N. And it's going to react to make water and NO2. So that HNO3 is going to fall apart and reorganise. And as you can see, our solution's starting to get a little bit of colour to it. And that's because the cognitive is attacking this oxide layer and it's generating little bits of NO2 which are going off and it's generating water at the same time. So it's got this sort of yellow colour to it already. So it's not a large amount of NO2 being given off, but there's a little bit. If you get really reactive, very small uranium turning, sometimes you get like clouds of NO2 coming off. So that the trick with this is to leave it just long enough that you get rid of all the black oxide layer, but not too long that you start eating away at the actual nice shiny metal as well and end up with nothing left. So you just have to keep an eye on it. Uh, but all the time you can see the solutions getting darker and darker and that's because of this NO2 component coming off. Right, and then we're going to tip this out and pat them dry. So 
So there you go, some uh, naked uranium. I mean, to the eye, that would look like just any other metal. And to all intents and purposes, because the radioactive component is gone, that's all it is. It's just another metal in the periodic table. Only it's the boogeyman. <laughs> Well, if I just left that in that weighing boat, slowly but surely, the, the surface layer of the uranium would start to react with oxygen in the air, and you'd, it would start to darken again, and you'd get this thick oxide layer building up again. So we have to put it in an ampule and get it away from air, and then it will stay intact. Well, the future of that uranium there is that uh, we will react it with iodine and turn it into uranium triiodide. And that's one of our start materials to make these interesting compounds because you can exchange the halides for other groups which make it much more soluble and you can get them in the solution and then crystallise them out and make very nice crystals and compounds.